Hi there. In this video I'll talk about how to find the total resistance of several resistors in a series circuit using this equation from the relationship sheet. That's the easy part. How to calculate the effective resistance of several resistors in parallel with this equation and how to approach more complex arrangements of resistors like this one. The easiest way to do this is by going over some examples. This is the first. OK, in the first example, we've got three resistors in series. And of course, we're using the equation on screen. But of course, since we've got three resistors, we're using RT as R1 plus R2 plus R3. And of course, all we need to do after that is substitute the three values, 10 plus 20 plus 40, which is, of course, 70 ohms. OK, for the second question, notice first of all that it's the same three resistors we had in the last example. Since they're in parallel, I'm going to use this equation. Why I've written it twice is I'm actually going to show you two different ways to work it out. Top line is always the same, as is the second line, that's the substitution, and then the two methods will vary from that point. Notice as well, of course, the equation is 1 over RT is 1 over R1. So be careful. I have seen people write RT is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 get no marks for that. Now at this point, the first method, what I'm going to actually do is convert tenths and twentieths to fortieths. I'm finding the common denominator. So if I convert these all to fortieths, first one I can multiply the top and bottom line by four. So one tenth, that's equivalent to four fortieths. This one I can multiply top and bottom line by two. So one twentieth, that's equivalent to two fortieths plus, of course, a 1 40th gives us a total of 4 plus 2 plus 1 gives us 7 40ths. And at that point, I'm going to leave this method for now. Concentrate on this method. So the second method, what I could have done after the substitution is to actually work out 1 over 10. I don't know why I'm using a calculator for this one, but 0 0.1 plus 1 over 20 is 0 0.05 plus 1 over 40 gives us this 0 0.025. Next line, what I'm going to do is add these all together. So 0 0.1 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.025 gives us this 0 0.175. So what I've got at this point is, of course, remember, this is not RT, and this isn't RT. Both of them are actually 1 over RT. So I've worked down to the same point using both methods. I'll move the paper up at this point. What I need to do next, if I'm using this method, where I was finding the common denominator, if 1 over RT is 7 over 40, then at that point, I then want to flip the equation upside down basically. So if 1 over RT is 7 over 40, then RT will be 40 divided by 7. And using a calculator, 40 divided by 7 is this. So we'll use three significant figures, 5.71, 5.71 ohms. Whereas this method, 1 over RT is this value here. And if I want to find RT, I actually take 1 over this answer. So therefore, RT is 1 over this value, 0 0.175. And I will calculate it, but it should give me, as long as I've not pressed the wrong button, whoops, I've just done, 1 divided by 0 0.175 gives me the same value, 5.71 ohms. And there we have it. So two different methods. And this method Sometimes quicker in order to work out, but just make sure you can use both. Of course, if the values you're originally given uh, make it difficult to find the common denominator, you might not be able, in some questions, to use this. So make sure you can use both methods. OK, for the last question, what I'll do is I'll add the two resistors in parallel first using this equation here. So, of course, that gives me 1 over 10 plus 1 over 20 find the common denominator, which is, of course, twentieths. So if I'm multiplying the top and bottom line by 2, that gives me one tenth is two twentieths 
plus 1 twentieth gives me, of course, 3 twentieths. Now, of course, this is not RT. It's not the effective resistance of those two. So in order to find the effective resistance of those two parallel resistors, RT, I would flip this round, and that would be 20 over 3 is equal to, and we'll find that with the calculator, 20 divided by 3. I'll take three significant figures, so 6.67 ohms. But of course, we still have that other resistor, the series resistance of 40 ohms. So the total resistance in the circuit would be the 6.7, sorry, 6.67, I didn't put in a symbol there, but 6.67 ohms for the two in parallel plus the 40 which is in series with that. And of course that would then give me, I'll write it here, 46.7 ohms. So having gone over the examples, you can see that when we're combining resistors, we get the largest resistance when we arrange them all in series and the smallest resistance when we arrange them all in parallel. Here's a quick summary. When resistors are arranged in series, the total resistance is found by using the equation RT equals R1 plus R2 plus however many resistors you have. Also, when we add resistors in series, the total resistance of the circuit increases. And of course, this will affect the current in the circuit, as I mentioned in another video. In parallel, we use this equation, 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus, again, depending how many resistors you have. When we add resistors in parallel, the total resistance of the circuit decreases. Also, when we add resistors in parallel, the effective resistance is always smaller than the smallest individual resistance. So, as an example, if we placed a 5 ohm, a 10 ohm and a 15 ohm resistor in parallel, then the resistance of this arrangement would be less than 5 ohm. Now, when we have more than one set of resistors in parallel, what we need to do is calculate the effective resistance of each parallel arrangement separately and then add them. So in this example, we'd find the effective resistance of R1 and R2, then the effective resistance of R3 and R4, and then just add the two values. This will be explained in one of the examples videos, so look out for that one. Here's a quick tip for when all the resistors in parallel have the same value. If we have two resistors of the same value in parallel, then the effective resistance is half of that value. So the effective resistance of the two resistors on the left will be 10 ohms. With three resistors of the same value in parallel, the effective resistance is a third of that value. So the effective resistance of the three resistors on the right is also 10 ohms. Finally, when we have a combination of resistors in parallel as well as resistors in series, such as this, we need to calculate the effective resistance of the resistors in parallel using the appropriate equation, then the resistance of the resistors in series using our other equation. Using the previous tip we learned, you should see that the effective resistance of the three parallel resistors is 20 ohms. The total resistance of the three resistors in series is 60 ohms. So since the parallel arrangement of resistors in green is in series with the other resistors, the total resistance of the whole arrangement is 80 ohms. Try working that out for yourself. I'll include a question on this in the examples video again, so check out that when it's released. As I said before, the resistance of an electrical circuit will affect the current and the voltage. So look out for the video on current and voltage in series and parallel circuits too. Anyway, that's it for now. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.